surgery from lung cancer what we do uh, I'll, i'll focus some point on what we do here in bangladesh i'm dr kazi saiful islam shaki associate professor thoracic surgery national institute of disease of the chest and hospital here in bangladesh next so as we all know these uh, uh, common facts lung cancer is the uh, leading cause of cancer in the uh, in the world and also increasing in bangladesh and uh, comprising one third of the all male cancers here and uh, but mostly presents at later stages of the cancer and directly related to consumption of tobacco and alcoholic beverages also toxic pollutants or pollutants of plastic and industrial wastes next <clears throat> So this is a study done in National Institute of Cancer Research Hospital in Bangladesh in 2007, their annual report, which shows that uh, lung cancer was the leading cause of cancer in men, also in both sexes, although breast was uh, the leading case in case of women and lung being the uh, fourth. But interestingly, here we also see the esophageal cancer to be the third in men and also in women. Uh, Uh, i am referring this because uh, this is a slide taken from uh, dr uh, kamaluddin sir he had a present uh, article published in 2013 so if we go to the next slide we can see uh, that the current global can 2020 uh, statistics shows that esophageal cancer has become the uh, number one cancer in all sexes here in bangladesh according to their studies and statistics and lung cancer had went to fourth place next slide also in the males esophagus is number one lung became second next slide and in women next slide and in women breast uh, remained the first and esophagus in the third position and lung cancer went actually to the sixth position so there is a, a change of trend in the in the uh, incidence and prevalence of lung cancer here in Bangladesh in 2020. So treatment for lung cancer, basically surgery, radiofication, frequency ablation, chemotherapy, radiation, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, and palliative procedures. <coughs> Our focus as a surgeon is on surgery and palliative procedures. Next slide. So surgery from lung cancer, uh, it is important in the diagnosis, staging and definitive management of non-small cell lung cancer. Resection is the primary mode of treatment, especially in uh, stage one and two uh, non-small cell lung cancer patients and also in uh, selected cases of stage 3A. And our target is always removal of the lobe or lung involved with the tumor and systematic evaluation of the ipsilateral hilar or medicinal lymph nodes. Recent advance, advances are focused on minimally invasive approach rather than the open thoracotomy. Next. So as we all know, it depends on the type of lung cancer, stages of the lung cancer, extent of resection and condition of the patient. Condition uh, in terms of nutritional status, comorbidities and fitness for general anesthesia. Next. So these are lymph node stations. As we all know, staging of the lung cancer depends on TNM staging, tumor uh, nodal stations and, and metastasis, uh, more uh, importantly, uh, distal, distant metastasis. So lymph node stations, as we all know, from 1 to 14, which are uh, important in assessing stages in, uh, in case of lung cancer. These are medicinal and hyalur and other lymph nodes, interpulmonary lymph nodes. Next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, as you can, as 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 we all know, we have to assess the tumor size uh, before before uh, attempting for any operations, and it is also very very important uh, for the staging to evaluate the lymph nodes. So, procedures to evalu evaluate the lymph nodes are bronchoscopy and endobronchial ultrasound, and also uh, endobronchial ultrasound is uh, supported by transbronchial needle aspiration, mediastinoscopy. Anterior mediastinotomy, thoracoscopic biopsy, and FDG PET scan. FDG PET scan also uh, is important in assessing uh, distant metastasis as well as the lymph node uh, assessments. Next. So these are uh, some pictures of the EBS TPNA devices. Next. Uh, this is how we do mediastinoscopy, also not uh, commonly done in Bangladesh. 
Next. <clears throat> this is the video medic stenoscopy. You can also have pictures and videos uh, uh, during the procedure. Next. And this is during a thoracoscopic uh, procedure. You can also assess the medicinal uh, and or carinal, subcarinal lymph nodes uh, by VATS, which is video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. Next. <clears throat> So types of surgery, if we go for resectional surgeries, there may be in minimonectomy, lobectomy, segmentectomy or wedge resection in a very, very uh, small and selected cases. Sleeve resection is another form of uh, technique of uh, surgery along with systemic lymph node dissection or and or sampling. Next. So types of surgery as we have already discussed, uh, we can go for a wedge resection only recently uh, they are uh, they are uh, attempting for waste dissection in very very small sub centimeter probes, uh, but uh, traditionally we had always uh, we had always practiced lobectomy. Minimal surgery is as lobectomy for a mass in the uh, in any lobe of the lung. So there may be lobectomy or pneumonectomy if it is central uh, central uh, growth. Next. So approach of surgery can be open thoracotomy. We do, all, most of the cases, we do a posterior lateral thoracotomy, which is often six inches to eight inches long uh, incision with, uh, with uh, incision along the muscle layers and, and spreading out the, uh, spreading out the uh, thoracic cavity by spreading out the ribs, adjacent ribs. And also there is uh, now uh, more and more we are uh, focusing on minimally invasive techniques which has been in the practice worldwide for the last 20 years. But in Bangladesh, we also had started doing mostly video assisted thoracic surgery or thoracoscopic surgery. And worldwide also they are doing robotically assisted thoracic surgery, which, which is yet to be started in our country. Next. So this is, this is how we do the minimally invasive thoracic surgery vets. Uh, in our cases, we do only single port vets. Uh, most of the cases, uh, and in the this is an advancement of the minimal invasive surgery in thoracic uh, surgery uh, arena. Uh, they started with four ports or four holes, and then they came down to three, two, and now this is a single port or uniportal vets uh, procedure. And we make an incision like this, and all the instruments, including the telescope, goes through this uh, through the this single incision or port. <laughs> Next. So our goal of surgery is to remove the main tumor completely with clear margins, which we call R0 resection, and remove all the draining lymph nodes on the ipsilateral side, preserve lung function so that a patient can maintain a good quality of life. Next. So who gets the surgery? As we have already discussed, stage 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and also selective case of 3A uh, are are good candidates for surgery, but in a very selective cases, stage 4A or small cell lung cancer, in recent days, some of the centers, they're trying for a very selective case of small cell lung cancer in very, very early stage without uh, distant or systemic metastasis. They have shown uh, in some of the studies some uh, better outcome, but it has to be very, very, uh, in a very, very early stage and very small uh, tumor. Next. So uh, as we have uh, discussed already, I'm continuing the discussion here. Uh, as we have said, stage 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B, uh, these, are a, these are the groups uh, which are amenable for surgery upfront. Then there are stage 3A, which is T3N1, and also T4N0 and T4N1, select, uh, depending on the structures they involve. If the structure they involve, if we can remove the structures involved with R0 resection, with the support of, if, if necessary, other, uh, other colleagues in other surgical specialties, like if we have uh, attachment in the vertebral body, then you have to remove portion of the vertebral body and you take uh, help from the spinal surgeons. And also if the red vessels are uh, involved like the superior vena cava and you have to resect the superior vena cava partially then you have to take uh, assistance from the cardiothoracic and vascular surgeons so these are another group 3a 3a is a variety of uh, have variety of presentations and surgery always depends on 
uh, selective cases and in an uh, in a high uh, volume center with very expert hands and most of all we need a multimodality tumor board decision uh, in these cases and also stage 4a in selected uh, extrathoracic metastatic cases a single extrathoracic metastasis if we can take out the primary and also that uh, metastatic nodule uh, say for example mostly in the brain then there is uh, then there is a good outcome uh, so uh, the very highly selective cases of 4a also uh, are amenable for surgery but the n2 disease which is 3a t1 t2 tb uh, these are a, these are very uh, interesting group of uh, patients in all these cases you must need a multimodality tumor board decision because n2 may be single or multiple or bulky non bulky stations uh, uh, lymph nodes or sometimes surprise lymph nodes surprise n2 which had not been uh, detected earlier but during surgery you get a n2 or you send for frozen section biopsy before proceeding for surgery you get n2 positive so these are uh, the situations where you can go for surgery but in very selective cases as i have uh, said already next <clears throat> and then comes the palliative surgeries uh, 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 in the area of palliative surgeries most of the palliative surgery that we do in our country is pleural fluid drainage because the patients come with uh, malignant or palamalignant effusions and we have to go for pleural fluid uh, drainage uh, often using chest drain tubes and the other uh, the other procedures that i mentioned here is metastatectomy most of the colorectal cases have uh, uh, lung metastatic i mean not most of the cases i mean most of the lung metastatic cases are uh, Uh, may come from the colorectal cancer uh, uh, patients or uh, renal cancer patients uh, i lost the slide show i think uh, sorry sir the slide is interrupted uh, please wait for a few seconds sir liya karan na apni uh apnar mobile data diye thuken so i i be uh, proceed with this uh, without the slide focusing on the palliative surgery i mean because most of the patients come here in our country uh, by the time they come they they uh, report to the hospital most of them develop pleural effusions and even with pleural effusions they delay delay coming to the specialized center uh, Uh, before before coming to the specialist center they go to the local doctors and they uh, go for taking out some fluid uh, through thoracocentesis and most of the time we see they take some anti tubercular drugs at the as the tuberculosis as as tuberculosis is mostly prevalent in our country so even in pleural effusion cases uh, they make delays in reporting to us but once they develop pleural effusions i mean uh, we we do do drain them using chest drain tube but uh, but the prognosis is uh, not very good at that stage and sometimes if we use the chest drain tube we have to convince the patient that once you put a chest drain tube it takes sometimes a long time for the for the drain to come to a, a minimal collection in 24 hours okay so uh, <coughs> we have come back to the slides again so other than pleural fluid drainage there can be metastatectomy as i have said earlier metastatectomy in secondary in lung coming from colorectal or renal carcinoma patients is also an option if we can preserve a considerable amount of lung parenchyma for the patient to survive then we can go for metastatectomies these are uh, uh, these are very small uh, uh, area of lung involved which we can take out by mostly wedge dissections and then come debulking surgery debulking surgery is not a curative surgery at all but in 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 certain cases uh with the consent of the multimodality tumor board we can go for debulking surgery which is not an rz r0 surgery maybe r1 r2 resection but maybe sometimes we give relief to the patient uh, removing a mechanical obstruction uh, maybe 
some compression on the esophagus or, or, or trachea or chest wall producing pain, uh, dysphagia, dyspnea, the, these things. And then salvage surgery, I mean, if you, if you complete your chemo radiation and, and there are no options uh, left and then the patient comes with recurrence, then sometimes salvage surgery is the thing that you do uh, to give relief to the uh, mechanical symptoms of the patients. Next. <clears throat> Next slide, Sorry, please. So now focusing on Bangladesh, some of the some of the information here. Not uh, uh, we don't have a lot of data, uh, of course. So total number of thoracic surgeons, uh, practicing thoracic surgeons in Bangladesh is at uh, uh, at present is thirty six. Uh, many of them are working in the government uh, service, and some of them are in the military hospital and some of them are practicing in the private gym, uh, private hospitals. So total number of centers, the major surgery has been performed. Government facilities are uh, uh, in the National Institute of Diseases of the Chester Hospital where I work. Then there are another uh, big center in Dhaka Medical College Hospital, Chittagong Medical College Hospital and also uh, uh, a handful of surgeons uh, in, in combined military hospital in the cantonment area. And in the non-government center, there are multiple centers, uh, mostly in Dhaka. Also, uh, also there are centers in Chittagong, the second largest city of the country. So uh, next. So this is a very, uh, very raw data, uh, as I don't have uh, exact data to present here today. Uh, because of the COVID-19 infections, 2020 and 2021, we saw a uh, 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 drastic reduction in the number of surgeries. So I uh, mentioned here about the surgeries performed in 2019 in our hospital, which is the National Institute of Diseases of the Chest and Hospital, NIDCH. In 2019, uh, we had lobectomies, pneumonectomies done for all kinds of diseases, mostly infective diseases, about 97 in total. Among those, 28 lobectomies, pneumonectomies were done for carcinoma of the lung, which is not a very, very large number because, I, as I as I had said earlier, that we uh, we get very few patients in the stage one or two uh, lung cancer uh, in, in the staging uh, category, and so focusing on the uh, palliative surgery, which is chest and tube insertion. There are malignant, paramalignant, plural effusions, which is puff, which were performed about 600 or 700 cases in a year. Uh, among the 1,200 to 1,300 cases of chest drain tube insertion for various reasons uh, in NIDCH in 2019. Okay, so uh, tube thoracostomy is uh, 600 to 700 malignant or paramalignant effusions out of 1,200 to 1,300 cases uh, in total in 2019. This is the data from uh, National Institute of Disease of the Chest in Hospital. So if I consider the lobectomies or pneumonectomies which are which were done in in non-government uh, private uh, hospital setups, the, uh, the number of lobectomies, pneumonectomies for CLI must be uh, three to four times more than that we did in NIDCH and uh, chest and tube insertion may be, uh, may be double in number in the same uh, time period. So this is the next slide. Can you see the slide? Yes. Okay, so uh, how they present. As I have already uh, talked about this in, in my um, presentation, mostly with malignant paramalignant effusions or in an inoperable stage. The patients that we get uh, during our admission in, in, in NIDCH, the people having lung cancer are mostly malignant or malignant effusion patients or patients with lung cancer in inoperable stages. And I also here can mention a study in NICRH uh, done by Professor Parvin, Madam. Out of 2,264 lung patients who were registered and treated during the period of January 12 to December 13, all cases were at stage three and stage four. You, you notice here, it is done in NICRH in 2012 and 2013, all cases. It mentions all cases were at stage three and stage four disease with 86% normal, non-sponsored carcinoma, 14% sponsored carcinoma. So next, next slide, please. 
next slide. Hello. Uh, Can we go to the next slide? Yes, yes, please uh, put the next slide. So why the delay? So there are studies which shows that the median duration between onset of symptoms to confirmation of diagnosis was 121 days. Between confirmation of diagnosis and initiation of treatment was 22 days. And between onset of symptoms and initiation of treatment was 151 days. This was a study done by Answer uh, et al. in 2021. And the, the cause that was uh, mentioned there, the healthcare providers in our country, I mean, if I consider the vast uh, uh, village areas and, uh, and uh, areas outside the big cities uh, all over Bangladesh. Healthcare providers are often the pharmacies, the people who sell medicine, and also traditional healers like Ayurvedic, homeopathic, uh, Yunani, Kaviraji, uh, herbal medicine providers, and village doctors, which are the most common informal. They are the informal healthcare providers in Bangladesh, and also among the formal institution services provided by general practitioners uh, and also specialists. The people always uh, report to the traditional healers or informal healthcare providers initially because maybe because of their lack of awareness and maybe because of their poverty. Uh, so by the time they reach to the specialist or specialist hospitals, there has been a great delay in diagnosis and uh, starting the treatment for lung cancer diseases. Next slide, please. So this is a reminder and recommendation, uh, whatever you say, for early surgery and better outcome, we need proper referral. So we need proper referral in all stages. Sometimes we can see in a peripheral uh, health facility, people come with a lung lesion or a nodule and they are treated with anti-tubercular drug or antibiotics for months. So this must be the, the, the information and the message must be spread out uh, among the doctors uh, about this condition that if you if you have uh, if you have seen patients with lung nodule or uh, or suspected lung lesions please uh, refer the patient early or at least you go for some uh, definitive diagnosis so high degree of suspicion is always welcome uh, not all the cases are tuberculosis uh, you must keep that in mind and increase awareness among the patients among the doctors also healthcare providers also and awareness not only uh, for the treatment of lung cancer, also to prevent lung cancer uh, as we can uh, achieve by uh, avoid smoking, tobacco and alcohol. Uh, although alcohol uh, has incidence, a very low incidence in our country, but uh, smoking is a, a, a serious problem here. And also lung cancer, uh, lung cancer screening, uh, if we can ha start a comprehensive and easy to access lung cancer screening in our country, that would be a very good idea. And two other points I have to mention here, uh, because I have seen patients when come uh, uh, with lung lesions and, and, and come to us and report to us, we see that he already had a CT scan of the chest done, but without IV contrast. So if we can send this message to the healthcare providers who advise CT scan of the chest, please do a CT scan of the chest with IV contrast. Unless you do it with IV contrast, uh, we cannot assess the medicinal lymph nodes. So if it is not otherwise contraindicated, like high creatinine level or drug allergy, please do it with a, a IV contrast. And, and another message for all our surgeons, let us, let us follow the guidelines in our surgical interventions. Let us not cross the staging criteria and go for surgery for every cases.